Hello guys, welcome back to another video with OD Designs. Today we're going to be talking about a double exposure effect. Uh, I'm going to show you how to create this manipulation and a really easy uh, tool that you can learn for future designs that you are making. Let's get straight into it. So, the first thing you're going to need to do is get your image. I'm going to leave the image in the description below and you can uh, download it from Unsplash and then you'll be good to go. So the first thing we need to do is cut this lady out and by doing this we're going to use the quick selection tool or the object selection tool. Let's see what it does first if I just highlight over the top. So as you can see we've got a kind of accurate selection. It's okay, not the best, but for this effect we don't really need the best above the hair because that's where the trees are going to come in and at the bottom it doesn't need to be too good either because we're going to have the trees coming in the bottom too. So I'm just going to get my lasso tool and switch it to the multiple effect and I'm going to go, I'm going to zoom in and I'm going to just add in bits like this. So, I think that's pretty good for now. I'm going to select and mask this now. Um, this is just so that I can balance out the uh, selection a bit better. If I unlock, the, the layer should be unlocked, then you click layer mask down here. So as you can see, we've got our cutout. It's not too bad. The body and everything is pretty good. The face is pretty good. I'm going to double click on my layer mask. And it's going to send me to this page where I can refine edge brush to all the hair just so I don't have too much getting uh, stuck in and if I hit my square brackets I can increase my brush size and just go away like that and just take off the edge of the hair by doing that just gets rid of like such a harsh, ed harsh edge um, okay and then do that that looks pretty good I'm happy with that uh, probably want to just get rid of that area right there we go Got our selection, I'm just going to smooth it off a bit, about 20 smoothing and feather it about 1.4. By doing this, I've created my selection. Now we need to create a background for the image, so I'm going to hit create new layer, go down below the selection layer and I'm going to go edit, fill and then I'm going to fill it with white. Right, so we have our background. As you can see, you can see little bits of the selection isn't perfect, but that doesn't matter too much for this effect as you'll see when we get through the video. The next thing you're going to need to do is get your flock of birds image. Once you've got your flock of birds image, you want to unlock it from the background and then drag it across to this image. And then you're going to need to position it above the head how you want the trees to look, basically. So once you've positioned it, you go to your overlay layers and then you go down to screen. Now, as you can see, the screen is definitely um, playing a part in how this is going to look because only it's only doing this because the uh, tree line has got a white background so it creates uh, it, it gets rid of the white when you change it to screen and it just keeps the color so as you can see we need to position it right so that we can get the birds in as well as the tree line so something like that maybe uh, I like to have a very varied amount of trees but I also like to keep the edge um, on the outside here where my mouse is closed off by trees so it doesn't look like it's breaking off because if you have no trees there like that it just looks stupid but if you have a tree on each edge of the head you can see it sort of shaping the design so now I've got my trees in place I'm gonna go to image adjustments and then I'm gonna desaturate the image so it's gray as well the next thing we are going to need to do is put a layer mask on this so you can see, because you can see the bottom of the image here, and we're going to use our gradient tool to get rid of this. Um, this is a good tool to use. If you change it to black and white like this, and you just drag up, as you can see, I've just got rid of the whole thing, which is not what we want to do. So if you just drag up, so yeah, if we just drag like that, see the background is like disappearing, something like that. The trees are on the edge right here as well, and on the edge here, and the birds are in. 
and as you can see there's a little bit of the head left we'll deal with that later don't worry about that um, I'm just gonna duplicate this I'm gonna command J so I've got two I'm gonna drag this one down and I'm gonna rotate it and I'm gonna put it on the bottom of the uh, image so as you can see this is cutting away the bottom half of her now as you can see the background of the image is sticking out what we need to do now is select our background layer I'm gonna name this to BG background and then we're gonna get an eyedropper tool which is press I on your keyboard and then we're gonna highlight over this this grayed out area once you've done this you want to get your paint bucket tool and just paint the background as you can see this hasn't worked too much so this is what I want to show you the trial and error because you could have had this working but it didn't work so if you command Z that then you go back to your gradient tool and we're just gonna have to layer mask this out eventually um, because there's no way of actually manipulating it enough to get rid of the design uh, unfortunately I'm just gonna have to um, just use the gradient tool on this and try and get rid of the harsh edge like that it's, it's pretty simple to do as you can see there's still a bit of an edge but I've got rid of most of it and the trees are there so the next thing I'm going to do is actually layer mask this out so if I can increase my brush tool I'm going to get my white and I'm not going to paint like that I'm going to paint with black and as you can see you want a soft brush for this I've got the wrong brush on if you get a soft brush fairly big good decent opacity and you can just sort of cut away at the body like like so depend on how how much of the photo you want to show you can just get rid of the edges or you can just slowly work away at it like I have and then you get this quite nice effect like it depends it, it really depends you got to rework this image quite a lot like I've just got rid of it there very slightly um, as you can see it looks a bit faded I'm gonna redo that if I make my brush a bit smaller and zoom in a bit at the top I'll be able to just get rid of some of this see such a harsh edge you don't want it really it, kind of ruins the effect of the design something like that maybe and then it's gone so it just looks a bit more realistic because the trees are there and everything's there so that looks quite good the next thing you're going to need to do is create another new layer this is going to go above the um, the manipulation of the image that we've created and this is going to be the color layer so what you're going to need to do now is change this to overlay and then you're going to want to make your brush size really big about 2000 will do, maybe a bit bigger, about 3000, yeah, that'll do. And then we're going to pick a color we want to make. I'm going to choose, I think, red this time. I'm going to make it actually a bit bigger. And I'm just going to click. Now, as you can see, we've created, already created a nice colored effect. So if I click again, we've got another red, and again, we've got another bit of red. So this is how you add the color on. Maybe a blue as well. If I just, you can mix the colors together, like so. And then we've got a bit of like bit of red and a bit of blue in there. Maybe we want um, a dark purple, like so. Like you see what I mean. Uh, if you blend these colors together, you're essentially creating a gradient. But um, be wary that the colors will mix and you will start to lose some of the color. As you can see, we've sort of lost the red there, but we've created a nice green at the bottom here and a blue moving into a purple. These are subtle things that you can do just to manipulate it. But once you've got this layer, you can essentially create a hue saturation, change the colors yourself. So you don't even need to keep manipulating it. If you just change it like so, I can get back my red, and I've got my blue on the right, and I've got the greeny yellowy at the bottom. Subtle things can make this image look good. Um, I'm gonna sort of leave it where it is because I quite like that. I'm gonna increase the saturation. Then I'm gonna get my levels layer, and I'm gonna bring in the darks and sort of increase the highlights as you can see now that I've increased the highlights you can't really see the edges anymore this is what you really want to achieve because I've increased the white so that it brings it together with the background and that has given you the option to get rid of this outline so it looks like it's floating this is a really clever tool um, you can just leave it at the top and it will basically bring your design together as one. That's about it. You can also add a brightness and contrast. Um, up to you really if you want to do that. If you decrease the contrast, obviously you can start seeing the edges again. But if you increase the brightness a bit, you get quite a nice uh, effect. 
increase the contrast, the colors come out nicer. As you can see, by using a few tools like the gradient tool to get rid of the edge of the picture that you've overlaid, and using the layer mask tool to cut out bits of the woman, and then using adjustment layers, you can really create a nice image. Just to top it all off, I'm gonna add a camera raw filter over the top. I'm gonna create my layer, then I'm gonna edit fill, 50% gray, right, so we've got that. And I'm gonna change, uh, I'm gonna leave it at normal for now, and I'm gonna go to my camera raw filters. Uh, I'll, you'll have seen this on another video if you've watched my other videos. I'm gonna use the effects panel, and I'm gonna increase the grain, this gives us a really nice old camera feel. Increase the size a little bit and keep the roughness about 55. This should be all right. I'm gonna overlay this to the top and then change that to overlay. And as you can see, if we zoom in, it's got quite, quite a nice grainy effect and it sort of blends the images better together. You can't really see that edge of the circle, uh, not the circle, but the, the image so much. You've um, You've got rid of it, you've created a better manipulation, and it just brings the, the composition together better. I hope you've enjoyed this video because it's been really fun making it and I've really enjoyed doing it. I hope you can learn something from this and just benefit from my, my teaching. Let me know in the comments. Uh, I'd love to hear your feedback, see how you got on with it, see if you can do it, see what you've made. Um, thank you so much for watching and I'll see you next time.